What? Psychedelic pissing contests are so incredibly stupid. Ugh. What I'm talking about here is the idiotic subset of the psychedelic community who try and one-up each other or to wave around their particular experience as if it's the psychonaut endgame to which we should all aspire. Typically, the amazing feat that they've accomplished is one of three things. One, they have taken a large amount of a certain substance. Two, they have taken a particular substance. Or three, they have taken a substance through a certain route of administration. Wow, that's so impressive. So in this video, I'm gonna unpack the nonsense behind the psychedelic pissing contest in the vain hope that I can get these silly people to dial down the bullshit just a tad. It's a wonderful thing to learn to be able to stand up and yell bullshit. Indeed it is Terence McKenna the chauffeur, but you keep your eyes on the road mate and leave the arguments up to me. You know, last time you got distracted, we ended up in some weird alternate dimension of hyperspace felines. Anyway, let's do this. You know, I was originally going to call this video psychedelic dick waving, but I figured that wouldn't go down too well with YouTube. So here we are, and hopefully you know what I'm talking about when I say pissing contest. But for those who don't, here's a definition. Any contest which is futile or purposeless, especially ones pursued in a conspicuously aggressive manner. And for any of us who spent more than five minutes here on the internet, then I'm sure you can relate. So let's get this party started with... They have taken a large amount of a certain substance. The first stop on our tour through wannabe psychedelic tough guys are those who pride themselves on taking vast amounts of their chosen substance. And it's not just that they take large amounts, it's that they make out like the amount that they took is the key to some next level consciousness, rather than just blacking out and shitting their pants. Often though, the increments with which they try and one-up you are so arbitrary. Bro, you think 50 milligrams is crazy? Wait until you try 55 milligrams. It's a game changer, man. This one is stupid for a couple of reasons, but mainly because of dosages vary so much between people that your particular game-changing amount to another guy might be nothing. You know, I was once on an ayahuasca retreat with a guy who drank seven cups and was still asking for more, whereas I was completely shit-faced from one full cup. Dosages are relative, but with a whole shitload of different factors which affect the outcome. You know, your weight, your size, how full your stomach was, if you're on any other substances. So it rapidly becomes completely meaningless. Also, just because you had a game-changing experience on 55 milligrams of your chosen substance, it doesn't mean that's now become like a fundamentally universal axiom. You know, someone else might get the exact same experience from 20 milligrams. Crazy, huh? I mean, this gets even sillier when you move into the space of the psychedelic enlightened who will push for larger amounts and shorter recovery times between trips, which they think will unlock higher and more permanent levels of bliss. You know, I've said this so many times that I'm sure it's getting boring, but psychedelics are a tool, a momentary glimpse at your existence from a different angle. and They don't permanently unlock jack shit. And if you think they do, then you are a mental midget living in some kind of fantasy world. Eventually, you will come down and all your delusions of telepathy and enlightenment will disappear back into dreamland. And if you don't put the hard work in right here, then your extreme doses will count for nothing. I'm sure to some people this might sound utterly bizarre because I'm such a proponent for psychedelics. I mean, I have an entire channel dedicated to how awesome they are but yet I have to constantly come on here and dial back the fantasy propaganda that gets pumped out about them to the point where I almost feel like I am the one who's putting psychedelics down just because I apply a bit of common sense. Anyway, the point here is that the experience itself is what matters, not how much of a certain substance you do in order to get that experience. It's too variable, so shut the fuck up and let's move on to the next category they have taken a particular substance. There has always been this constantly shifting set of goalposts for which psychedelic is 
the most powerful substance ever. At one point it was LSD, then it was DMT, then it was ayahuasca, salvia, iboga, blah blah blah, and undoubtedly the current flavour of the moment is 5-MeO-DMT. Now clearly different substances can manifest different altered states, and some of them are reliably more potent in one regard, whereas others will be in a different way. You know, as an example, nothing seems to get the same kind of physical reaction as ayahuasca, and 5-MeO certainly seems like a more reliable way of getting the non-dual experience. But these are just general observations, and there is an insane amount of overlap with people meeting God on mushrooms or having insanely physical experiences on mescaline. Similar to the prior points around dosages, there is so much variation and crossover here that thinking that you're the king of the castle just because you did substance X is stupid. And I say this as someone who's done pretty much all of these things, and I can tell you that the experiences which were the most powerful, useful, and insightful to me did not necessarily correlate with what all the pretentious twats think is the most powerful substance ever. So take your nonsense and stick it up your ass, which is actually a pretty good segue into the next category. They have taken a substance through a certain route of administration. Until recently, I don't think I would have believed that there are actually people out there who took so much pride and invested so much ego into the root of administration. But then I got into an utterly amazing exchange online with some guy who told me that I really have no basis for commenting on the particular guru, no prizes for guessing who, and that my particular catalogue of psychedelic experience counts for nothing because it was missing one critical entry. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the boofer. Now, for anyone who is fortunate enough to not know what boofing is, also known as plugging, then it's the practice of taking your substance of choice, mixing it with some liquid, sucking the liquid into a plastic syringe, and then sticking the syringe up your shit pipe and squirting the contents into your rectal cavity. And then you spend the next 15 minutes or so desperately trying not to fart. Now, it's not the actual boofing part that makes this case so interesting. After all, if someone wants to stick drugs up their poo shoot, that's completely fine with me in principle. But what makes the boofers really stand out from the crowd is the passion they have for boofing. Because in their eyes, not only is boofing the best method, but it attains experiences which other methods of administration simply cannot compete with. Whether you're looking for psychedelic exploration, boof it! Spiritual enlightenment, Boof it! A non-dual unity with the creator of the universe? Boof it! Okay, so I'm going to hold my hands up here and say that I have never tried boofing anything. So there is a chance that I'm missing out on something special. But I'll also happily admit that the idea that the final frontier of spiritual enlightenment can only be accessed by sticking a plastic syringe up your bum hole is fucking hilarious. So let me share what this guy was saying. Have you had any awakenings? Have you had any experience of 5-MeO-DMT? Try plugging. Work your way up to a 35 milligram intense prolonged breakthrough and then do that around 50 times. Then we can talk. It's pretty impressive that within just a few sentences this guy managed to cover all of the douchebag scenarios that I've outlined in this entire video. Bravo, sir. Bravo. Still, if you really want to impress me with what you can stick up your ass, then try one of these San Pedro cacti, spikes and all. Then we can talk. Okay, so I think I pretty much got everything off my chest. Hopefully you at least found something entertaining in all that. And if so, press some buttons to inform Google that you approve. As always, thanks to my supporters on Patreon, thanks to all you guys for watching, and if there's anything relating to psychedelics that you'd like to see me cover here on the channel, let me know in the comments below. So that's all from me, and I will see you next time.